Alright, so after having this apart for last time and after having its immediate important use out of the way, I figured it would be very easy to add a panel mounted adjustment potentiometer to this thing since the original one used to be there, which is A inside the case and B rather lethal to access since you need to be around poking and there is mains reference stuff on this board so you really don't want to adjust it while it's in use anyway add an external potentiometer is just what I've done an ancient 10k same as the original 10k and I've got it very securely mounted now for a test run because I don't know if this uh, adjustment circuit is uh, on the primary or secondary side of a regulator I'm hoping it's uh, secondary side, but I don't have too high hopes since there isn't really any opto couplers on this board. So this could be very well be at a very high potential, it could be at 400 volts of DC reference to mains F, in which case I, well, the potentiometer should handle it, these old things tend to have a very high breakdown voltage, but I'm going to want to use some more appropriate cable than this to run it to the front panel and mount it somewhere in there because this can probably handle 30 volts or so <laughs> anyway let's test it out alright so what I've got here is one meter monitoring just the 8 bit of the device just in case I've adjusted the printed geometry wrong it's just got 16 volt output caps so I don't want to turn it up too high and explode those and I've got my big meter measuring AC voltage and it's reference to the negative terminal of the mains uh, big storage cap mains filtering cap and uh, what we're looking for is uh, a bit of AC voltage since if we probe here between the case which is mains earthed and uh, the negative we get 107 volts AC and the same goes if we probe the output terminals. Now if this potentiometer is referenced to something related to that primary side cap it would not have any considerable AC component in it in re reference to it since it's probably not uh, going to be used in some high voltage AC switching circuit or like it's a small DC uh, feedback circuit so let's just probe here and see what we get noise ah, and 104 volts so let's sort of probe the other end as well 102 volts and that <laughs> changes the output voltage a bit anyway that's a reasonable confirmation that uh, this potentiometer is on the secondary side thankfully, which makes this a little easier to work with but uh, as a cause of extra safety I'm going to also hook my negative lead of this meter up to mains F and uh, measure measure against the potentiometer just to be extra sure because I don't want to cause any lethalities and after furthermore verifying against the mains F we've got a knob on the front which goes to a three piece ribbon wire twisted tied to the original cable loom I don't particularly fancy cable ties shrink wrap to a dodgy connector which has its friend dodgily mounted in very bright light to the board so this should do it. The only thing that could really bring this down would be excessive noise pickup in the line, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Thankfully, they routed mains out to the output socket on it and the input socket as well. Now, we've just got the input socket here, we do have mains going in this loom, so yeah, could be a bit of harm getting through. I might be forced to use a shielded cable if that's going to be an issue, but we'll see. 
I'll have to try it. I don't think, think it'll go up in smoke anyway. The worst that will happen is it's... Well, it could go up in smoke, but it's probably just going to have a bit of output noise. Anyway, it's time to get this board back installed and try it out. There we go. Everything hooked back together and it's time for a first test. I got you a prime time tripod assisted explosion view just in case something is horribly wrong, although I doubt it. I verify the pin out of my actually rather nice looking connector, I must say. It looks better when it's installed in the case. It kind of fits in. Anyway, meter showing output voltage. Let's go. There we go. Just in range of about 14.5 to 13.4 volts, so 1.1 volts of regulation space. It's not huge, but 13.4 to 14.5 is pretty much everything you want out of a basic battery charger. I had a look at it and considered modifying it in order to get a bit more uh, maximum output voltage out of it, but it seems to be kind of tricky and I don't feel like digging into it. What I, what I would gain out of uh, a high output voltage would be the ability just to just whack it on and equalize the battery. But eh, that's not really what I have this thing for. This is just my general purpose. Oh, I need to charge, it, charge that battery, better hook this up. And it does a good job at that. Hooray! And while I was uh, inside uh, messing around, I decided to take the inverter board out and redo the solder joints on the big connectors. They were indeed beginning to crack. I went too far gone though. The rest of the joint looked fine. But I just thought maybe you'd like to have a look at this board. It's quite beautiful in, in its simplicity, really. You just have some 4000. Serious logic and a couple of op amps, and that's pretty much all you need in order to make a basic inverter. A lot of engineering skill. Reverse engineering this thing probably wouldn't be too difficult if you have the time. And I've done tests on this thing, I don't know if I ever made the video, but uh, it actually performs really well. It's a quite low distortion output unit, so it is a pure sine wave inverter of course. So yeah. Controlled by a little crystal there. Probably a just standard 32 kilohertz clock crystal. You can see it better than I can. So yeah. This is an entire inverter board. This device is really battery charger, inverter, two entirely different things. You could probably run it as a battery charger without even having this board installed. I would not be surprised. I can't be bothered testing it since this, there's nothing wrong with this board. I'm gonna let it be there. I've got an extra inverter. Hooray. And there's another while I'm at it type fix. I decided to, instead of having an Anderson connection just bodged onto the positive and negative outputs here. I've actually, <laughs> and then just having a Anderson connection cable, extension cable running out a hole in the bottom, which is nice and sharp and awful. I've mounted a, an Anderson connection to the front of the unit instead. Uh, since I'm off oh, since I'm officially bad at making holes, <laughs> I just mounted the screws in there. Kind of drilled a little bit when it went okay. That looks pretty good. Almost looks stuck. And it's not going anywhere. And now I might actually have get a bit of use out of my and there's an extension cable. And I also have my Anderson 2 banana plug adapter, so 
I can just do that and then I can hook up my charger or leads to there because they're all banana plug I can even put you know a DC plug or anything I have banana jacks and everything uh, love those Anderson connections and there we have it a 25 amp battery charger with integrated inverter I'm kind of hesitant to call this a UPS anymore since it doesn't even have an integrated battery but if you hook a battery up here I suppose it is a, still is one of those anyway I even took the time to mark out some guidelines for the voltage setting the charger LED is a bit funny it only turns on when, when it's actually charging the capacitors so it's just flickering on and off a bit when it's sitting idle when I did these voltage settings I actually did allow it to warm up beforehand and I did use a small I think 1k load across the terminals in order to make it uh, just work a bit for it in order to ensure a proper setting and it's really going to be a rather flexible and usable device for me since on my battery bank for my solar system I've got an Anderson connector for charging and or accelerator loads fused with about 60 amps so I can just hook this up and run it as an inverter which is a good thing because this is slightly more efficient than my normal 1500VA inverter and it has just a normal uh, socket instead of the IEC con connectors that my other one of inverter uses and uh, if I want to I can just take these banana plug adapters and plug them into the connector and you know run this with a car or something and I've got a proper 250 VA pure sign with inverter on the go granted it's not exactly mobile <laughs> I mean it's half a meter wide and probably 30 centimeters tall but I like big things <laughs> anyway I'm too tired now so this will be the end of this video hope you enjoyed it cheerio